I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Okay, let's try this one here. Hmm. What? This plate appears to be able to move, but something is blocking it. Okay. This plate appears to be able. Plate appears. This plate appears. Oh. Uh. I must need something to continue. Hmm. Okay, so we can't do this part yet. Search in here again. Maybe there'll be something in here. The door is locked. Let's try this key. This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patients. Let us study them closely and see if there are any familiar names. Lots of dust. The records from E to Z have not been touched for years. No known names. Disappointing. No dust on the records from A to D. They've been handled recently. No known names. Disappointing. Unless they've been taken out, probably. I see some papers that were not there the first time I visited. Oh. Valuers report property. Building land located in Comside, Churston Client, Sir Carmichael Clark, April 15, 1935, Court and Brunskill Office. Hmm. Oh, I wish we could open that. Maybe we can. Court and Brunskill. The name is familiar. Is that not the name of the firm Donald Fraser works for? These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Ernest Luggan, MD Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. Okay, so anywhere else we can have a look? Uh, let's have a look over here. Oh, we're going to go that way? The door's open. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while no one is around. Ah, uh, okay. Then we'll go out there. So we need to look for something. I feel. Oh. Oh. That's the brooch. A dark dragon for a bright haired maid. See. 
Here is the dagger. I've already seen similar daggers. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. Thora. Let's have a look over here. Just turn it around. Compass, point to the thals. Bronze and magnetite, Han Dynasty, circa 210 BC, purchased in Hong Kong, 1935. Is there anywhere else we can look around here? Can we look around this way? I still have that key. Is that me? Is a shadow? Oh, it's just myself. I thought there was like a shadow of somebody walking out of the side, but I think it's just me. Oh, I think that might be for the door. Probably. Yes, it is. Order and method above all. Let us finish examining the mansion while no one is around. Okay, I think if we go back and... Oh, oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here. Comside's private collection, purchases since 1920. The catalogue for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. Hmm. It'd be interesting that you could actually open the book, but I suppose not. Okay, uh, I don't think there's anything else in this room to have a look at, so I think what I'll do is just go back into the office, I'm guessing that was uh, Sir Carmichael's son? No, that was not their son because they never had any children. Um, I can't remember his relation. Oh, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant either. It was this. Franklin Clark. Oh, the younger brother. The brother. So... Well, I think it was his office. I'm pretty sure it must be. There might be something here that I might have forgotten to pick up. Perhaps on the desk? Can I go around the desk? Oh, oh, here. Franklin appears to be very active. Franklin Clark appears to be a typical British gentleman, a good sportsman, a hunter, a traveller. Look, maybe in the hall, maybe there'll be something in there. How am I going to open this trunk? Let us examine it. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay guys, I just had to look up a guide just to figure out how to unlock this trunk and to find the combination. But um, I, I didn't know what it was we're supposed to be looking for. So on the guide it said it was 1927, which is this right here. So we were to lift this up in order to get the combination. Leaving the code on the trunk. What a strange character Franklin is. Well, it helped. So before it was he was well travelled, he is a good huntsman and a sportsman, so maybe it's to do with that, perhaps? Do like these pictures to show? That looks like something. So it's like a sportsmanship there. But what does the time have to do with it? I think he's a clue actually. So, what is this sound? I should be able to open the trunk now. But what do these have anything to do with it? There we are! Oh. Okay, let's, let's go with it. <laughs> drink. Whiskey and other good quality drinks. Mr. Clark really has refined tastes. Okay. Empty. It's empty as well. I think one of these is going to be a secret drawer. To be honest. Why has Franklin put an Allen key inside his trunk? I'll borrow it for a minute. Okay. That'll be for the map. That's what that'll be for. Oh, wait, no. We'll start again, so that means we're not finished. Ah, okay, no, for this. this an app. Allen key. It can be used in five positions. No, that's that one we want. Nope. Nope. 
just looks like a hexagon. An Allen key. Another screw. This engraving is not very easy to understand. I need to sort it out. Franklin must really love his country to have an engraving in his trunk. I think I heard the panel above release. A signet ring? A signet ring with a code written on it. 1587. It may be useful to me. Hmm, okay, 1587. Let's try that map. Maybe the ring is actually through there? Possibly. Let's have a look. February 1922, South Africa. July 1920, Alaska Peninsula. Basically, we need to go look at all the trophies, and in doing so, we're going to look and we're to collect. April these. 1925, a shape province, Sumatra. So there's little symbols here, and I'm guessing obviously where they're actually from is to use as a clue thing. This was a paw print, and one was the leaf. So we use a signet ring for this part. The plates around the picture appear to have unlocked. I think I've already seen these symbols on Franklin's trophies. The Lion of Sumatra. Okay. Ah, okay. That worked. The Alaskan Kodiak Bear. Yeah. The African Kudu. I heard the sound of a mechanism. Strange way of protecting one's safe. Triangulating one's hunting sites on the map. And we know what it is. It's 1587. Fifteen, eighty, 
Yeah. These documents are very likely going to help me for the rest of the inquiry. So we've got some coins. A dozen gold sovereigns, some shares for the Southern Railway and some treasury bills. This is not worth much, hardly enough to justify your robbery. Charlotte Clark Comside, Churston, Devon. To Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury Road, Chim Shatsui, Colon, Hong Kong, Comside, 1935, January 1st. I wish you with all my heart a happy year 1935. Writing my greeting cards, I have affectionate thoughts for you. Always smiling as a child, sailing to distant countries and bringing back to us trunks full of wonder. At home, Everything annoys me, starting with this young Thora Sir Carmichael is so fond of. I have nobody to share my feelings with, so I write to you. How can I tell you what happens to me? The simplest way the better. I am doomed. I still have one year to live, no more. How do I know? I opened the secret drawer of Carmichael and read a letter not addressed to me. In this letter... Dr. Logan tells my husband in the most direct way the truth he conceals from me. Sir, I know, but my husband doesn't know I know. Please don't tell him. And if he shares the truth with you, act as you are surprised. Carr will probably speak in his usual convoluted way, but I wanted to be the first to announce it to you. It does matter to me that you are aware of what happens in Comside. Warm regards. Charlotte. And the fact that she had to feel that she had to speak to somebody else and not her husband just goes to show. It's a shame. Sir Carmichael Clark, Comside, Churston, Devon. To Mr. Franklin Clark, Peninsula Hotel, Salisbury Road, Tsim Shasui, Kowloon, Hong Kong. Comside, 1935, January the 12th. Dear Franklin, first... I wish you a good start to a successful new year. I have received your letter dated December 10th. Thanks for defending my interest against Wang, this robber. Things could have got pretty bad if you weren't a real good-blooded guy. I envy you for that. Things go on here much as usual. Charlotte is moderately free from pain. I wish one could say more. You may remember Thora Gray. She is a dear girl and a greater comfort to me that I can tell you. I should not have known what to do through this bad time but for her. She has an exquisite taste and shares my passion for Chinese art. No daughter could be a closer or more sympathetic companion. Life has been difficult, but I am glad to feel that here she has a home and true affection. You wrote me you want to stay in China for one more year or even longer. I don't object. The longer you stay, the more opportunities you will have to increase our collection. Nonetheless, you should know that we miss you here, and that Charlotte will be gone by the time you come back. I am, dear Franklin, your truly affectionate brother. Eton College School Year, 1912-1913, Franklin Clark. School report for Franklin Clark. According to his teachers, Franklin was a good student, but lacked discipline. I was expecting him to come in here as we were just reading all his stuff. So inspect the mansion surroundings. So now we can go outside, really. Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? Mm. So there's a water fountain. Something makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, why is this moved? <gasps> Round pellets. Revolting. 
brown pellets. Oh, look at the rat. <laughs> Revolting. Brown. <laughs> Tut -tut. The gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. <laughs> there, that. Hmm. Let's see what's down here, shall we? Oh, that's a fine time, lovely. It's really nice, I like that. This fountain makes a very relaxing sound. Mm -hmm. This wisteria is in full bloom. That is really pretty. We do lots of nice flowers, nice pink flowers. Ah, oh, that would look so lovely in the spring. I love spring. It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. We hope it was the gardener. Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. Mm, I think it was Franklin. This subject would probably be useful to me. Mm -hmm. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. <gasps> Yay, I like this part. Why did Thora leave personal belongings behind at Comside? Thora left Sir Carmichael's gifts. Carmichael wrote to Franklin to tell him that he found Thora charming. Thora Grey, expert in art history. Thora left a letter behind. Thora Grey stayed behind to settle Car Sir Carmichael's affairs. A dagger is missing for Sir Carmichael's display case. So why did she leave them? Well, it shows that she did leave them, so that one. She left a letter behind? And you find her charming? No. Not that. Thor does not want to be accused of theft. Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But she chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusted her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. It's quite sad because those were a gift and she f felt that she couldn't be able to take them, but it's un as you said, it's understandable too. Let's say this one. She did order rat poison and she thinks that Lady Clark thinks that Thorgrave tried to poison her. Oh, perhaps not. Thora Grey never considered poisoning Lady Clark. No. Thora Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the path not far from the property. <laughs> I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. And put everything back to the way it was. Oh, can we go this way? May you have peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. Can we go over here? Okay. 
Let's see. Go over here. No. Telephone Hastings. I think as soon as we go in back into the house, the um the brother is gonna appear. Uh, Franklin. Franklin's going to appear. I would like to congratulate Clark Scardiner. What symmetry. <laughs> it is very impressive. Okay, so we're going to have to go and telephone Hastings. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Oh, the skeleton key was from here. April 1925, Aceh province, Sumatra. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Now we telephone Hastings. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shirston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burnt document? Yes. You just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. À ce soir. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. This bottle is for our visitors. Personally, I prefer the sherry. This man is tired. Donald is short of sleep, and it looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. Mr. Paddle, I don't know why I'm here. Becoming patient with his indecision, accuse him of being guilty, reassure him about the fact that he will be listened to. Yes, that seems nice. You wanted to talk, and you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Paro, since Betty's death, I've doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row. I'll <laughs> point out it's not a psycho psychoanalyst office. Uh, encourage him to continue, I'd say. Have a drink, and tell me about this dream. It's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her around the throat and I squeeze and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. But I would never tell her about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Very interesting. 
Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. It's, it's obvious. It's, well, we know it's not him anyway. Okay, how should Donald's dream be interpreted? Donald's starting to have feelings for Megan and feels guilty about abandoning Betty. Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. Do. This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. You've helped me a great deal. I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like trains. It's easy to sleep rocked by the sound of the wheels. Poor boy, he seems completely lost. Well, women seem to like him. I think Megan will take care of him. Oh, I remember. Did you order the product I needed? Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Bien, it is late. And ask Miss Gray to come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. Mademoiselle, I asked you here in order to answer a very important question. I remind her that she did not see anybody on the day of the murder, accusing her of having lied, accuse her of being the killer's accomplice. I remind her that she did not see anybody on the day of the murder. Am I right in thinking you said that you did not speak to anyone on the day Sir Carmichael was murdered? It's the absolute truth. Yet, Lady Clark maintained that she saw you talking to a stranger on the front doorstep. Really? She must have been mistaken. Oh, I remember now. I'd forgotten all about it, but it wasn't important. It was just a salesman. One of those traders who sell stockings from door to door. Can you describe him to me? Medium size? Mm. Glasses, dark suit, and a felt hat. Not the sort of man you notice. Completely harmless. That's why I forgot all about him. Nothing else? He was very hesitant and shy. Usually door-to-door -door salesmen are very confident. But he wasn't. It's totally the colour. Indicate that she lied about leaving Churston. Ask whether she resigned of her own free will. Point out that her departure is suspicious. Ask whether she resigned of her own free will. You did not leave Churston willingly, I believe. I don't wish to lie. Lady Clark did not appreciate my presence. And Franklin cannot go against the wishes of a sick lady. He is a good man. And he worries a great deal about his sister-in-law. I noticed that you left some personal belongings behind at Churston. Ask if she will collect the objects. Ask if she will return to Churston. Say the objects presented a risk. Um, and ask if she will collect them. Are you planning on going back to collect them? No. I prefer not to carry the weight of the past. Yeah. I must ask you one last question. Please reply frankly with either yes or no. If Lady Clark had died, would you have agreed to marry Sir Carmichael if he'd ask you? How dare you ask such a question? Sir Carmichael treated me just like his daughter. And all that I ever felt him was affection and gratitude, nothing else. Thank you, mademoiselle. I will not keep you any longer. I met Thora Gray on the stairs. Her cheeks were ablaze, and she appeared to be deeply hurt. Poirot, have you offended the poor girl again? Do
Do you have good reasons for accusing her? I accused her of nothing, Hastings. I simply asked her an important question she did not answer. Let us see if we can answer it for her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. I thought I'd marry Sir Carl Michael if he had lived. Material proof. Sir so wanted to be married and certainly would have succeeded in doing so. You must know how to read between the lines, Hastings. When Sir Carmichael refers to paternal affection, he is lying to himself. Read this engraving on the brooch. A dark dragon for an angel with glossy hair. These are the words of a lover, not a father. Lady Clark was not wrong. Mm -hmm. What if Sir Carmichael had fallen in love with his secretary? That doesn't mean that she forced him to do so. True, there are extenuating circumstances. She is a penniless orphan. But she is calculating. Just look how she avoided it when asked if she would have married Clark. I see. You think she seduced Sir Carmichael for her own gain, and that now she is doing the same with his brother. Praro, your world is a very dark place. Do not get carried away, mon ami. We have another more important matter to settle. Really? Yes. Would you believe that Miss Grey taught me something new? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, is there another common point between the murderers? So, yeah. For each murder, the victim or someone close to them were in a situation where they could buy stockings. It's perfectly clear, Hastings. Perfectly clear. Indeed, a stocking seller visited Andover, Bexhill, and Churston on the day of each murder. We have our suspect. This should be of interest, Jop. Chief Inspector, we are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect? Yes. Contact all the stocking wholesalers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. Got a Doncaster. That's next. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Yes, I'm going to Cheltenham. You shouldn't travel today. You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. 